Officers requesting backup. Today, we are uncovering some of the newest secrets recently added to Grand Theft Auto 5 that also come with some really cool trivia. I bet you, you will learn something new from this video. Did you know that this character created CJ and wrote GTA San Andreas? Or that these guys are actually from Vice City? We're also going to be finding out today who El Rubio really is and explore deep under the surface of Cayo Perico. We've got tons of new GTA information to cover, so be sure to stick around for the whole video and click thumbs up in the next 5 seconds to vote for who you think is the best GTA protagonist and announce the winner in tomorrow's video. <laughs> Where's Gustavo? So right off the bat, in Cayo Perico, we are introduced to Gustavo, who is the assistant to El Rubio. Gustavo is noticeably frightened, however, by the presence of El Rubio and just does whatever he says. Uh, you feel the panther? Uh, you don't know to. Oh, you did something right, finally! Now, a little bit later on, while exploring the island and preparing for the heist, Gustavo can be seen doing what he was told to do by El Rubio. But in an effort to assert his dominance over Gustavo with the stereotypical evil bad guy that uses his riches to appear nice demeanor, well, he has Gustavo turned into an afternoon snack. This will sting. So, what is the Vice City Easter Egg? Well, in Vice City, there's a character named Gonzalez, who is the right-hand man and assistant to Colonel Cortez. But over time, Gonzalez has gotten sloppy, incompetent, even sold out his boss, stolen from him, and lots of other GTA amazingness. But by this point, the Colonel does not take too kind to Gonzalez and wants us to get rid of him. And he does so by tasking Tommy Versetti with taking him out in the mission Treacherous Swine, where we rip Gonzalez to shreds with a chainsaw. Now, this is where the Easter egg comes into play. So both of these men, their names start with a G. Both of them wear the same orange floral shirt. Both are the right hand man, and in some cases literally, to a boss that hates them, and both get ripped to shreds, just in different ways. So while the inspiration for Gustavo is just a simple easter egg, it's always nice to see Vice City characters in GTA 5, and believe it or not, there are three actual Vice City characters who appear in GTA 5. The first being Willie from the legendary rock band Love Fist. Then there was Laszlo, and then Jack Howitzer, a failed 1980s action movie star. These guys are all seen in Grand Theft Auto 5 at some point or another, and while they are heard in Vice City, they never actually physically appear in that game with character models. Just simple concept art. And there's actually a very genius reason for that. After GTA 4, Rockstar separated GTA into three universes, the 2D, the 3D, and the HD. And in short, characters from one universe cannot physically cross over to the other unless they never make a physical appearance in the other universe. It gets confusing very easy, but either way, what you're looking at here is a family of characters that all date back to the 1980s. Now, while the island of Cayo Perico takes us back to Vice City, did you know that the introduction to the Cayo Perico update actually takes us back to San Andreas, with one of the highlights of this update being the cameo that Dr. Dre makes. It's always nice to see a real-life celebrity in GTA, and while we haven't forgotten about Dre, who are the other people with him? Well, that old white guy in the background is actually Jimmy Iovine, one of the richest guys in music that you've probably never heard of. But that other guy in the back, who is that? Well, that is real life celebrity DJ Pooh. Now, before you make a joke about his stage name or any guesses on who he might be if you don't already know who he is, all that I can say is don't judge a book by its cover because you'll get knocked the F out. This is the man who wrote the movie Friday, and the reason that the 40 seconds of screen time that Pooh has in the new GTA Online update is so important is because he's actually one of the most important figures in Rockstar Games history that you probably didn't know about. Because without him, we would have never gotten CJ or the GTA San Andreas story as DJ Pooh is the co-producer and writer of GTA San Andreas and the whole story. 
Now that's a cool fact, but where things get even cooler is that CJ wouldn't exist without Pooh. With his real life involvement in the music industry, Pooh obviously has connections, and one day while at Rockstar Games during the planning of GTA San Andreas, Pooh called Young Melee on the phone and the two had a conversation about music as Young Melee is a rapper himself. But unbeknownst to him, he was on speakerphone and Rockstar loved the sound of him enough to encourage Pooh to fly Young Melee in for an audition for San Andreas. And the rest is history because the character of CJ was born after this very random phone call way back in the day. Panic paves the way to bad karma. So who is El Rubio? Well, aside from being the main protagonist of the Cayo Perico heist, the coolest thing about El Rubio is the fact that he is voiced by Andre Sogliuzzo, who was actually handpicked by none other than Al Pacino to voice Tony Montana in the 2006 hit video game, Scarface The World Is Yours. Now, while that is a cool fact, in multiple locations at El Rubio's compound, we can actually find images of characters from Red Dead Redemption 2. While most are probably just Easter eggs like Princess Isabeau, others, however, might not be. If you remember when El Rubio was introducing himself, he mentions that his opa was German. My opa was German. Must be why I love the techno. Wow. <laughs> he got some cool stuff planned. And out of all the Red Dead Redemption 2 pictures that El Rubio does have at his compound, he has multiple of a German man named Andreas, who appears in Red Dead Redemption 2 as an immigrant who just migrated to America from Germany with his family. We end up saving him, not knowing that later on, a direct descendant of his would be the antagonist of GTA Online. Okay, but wait, in case you're thinking, but GTA and Red Dead aren't connected. If you don't remember, in Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar hinted that the universes were connected by the Epsilon program Time Traveler, who turns into a baby. Uh. I'm a little confused. Yes, I think you are. Now, Cayo Perico also does house some really cool secrets in the dark depths of its waters. The first being a meteor that can be found deep under the surface of Cayo Perico. And being that Cayo Perico is actually located in the Caribbean Sea, it's not exactly the Gulf of Mexico. But in real life, the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs landed in the Gulf of Mexico and created the Chicxulub Crater. So based on context clues, I think it's safe to say that this might be the meteor that wiped out the GTA dinosaurs, which is why they aren't dinosaurs in GTA, right? Jokes aside, there are also many scattered secrets in the water that allude to the theme of narco trafficking. My absolute favorite is the smuggler submarine that has been split in half as it probably hit one of these mines and exploded. We can also see the remnants of the smuggler hanging out of the sub. This is just an eerie scene to come across in the water and there's so much left to be explored, but it makes me wonder. Is this a possible hint at GTA 6? Because multiple verified GTA 6 leaks have stated that the game will involve drug running and smuggling from South America to the US. Either way, make sure to subscribe because in my next video, we are exploring all of the deep secrets hidden beneath the waters of Cayo Perico and you don't want to miss out.